Contrary to what a lot of people say, I'm going to make the case that YouTube isn't broken. While this has been said for years now, over the past few months I've seen a lot more people jump onto the YouTube is broken bandwagon. There's no doubt that I have been one of those creators that have criticized this website, but today I wanted to take a little bit of a different direction and start a new series called The Devil's Advocate, where I'll argue that YouTube actually is not broken. The first piece of proof that many will show is that their videos aren't being promoted as much as they used to be, so there must be something wrong with the website. Now what's been happening to us? We noticed it happening last week and the week before, suddenly, it would happen about once a week where our new upload wouldn't show up on the home page, it wouldn't show up on the mobile phone, it wouldn't show up on the TV, it wouldn't show up on the recommended bar. It was almost just completely disappeared. And the only people that had access to it were people coming directly from the subscriber feed. This one really baffles me. How could one person noticing that their videos aren't being promoted as much mean that the entire website is messed up? How YouTube works is that the website will look through a ton of statistics and then see which videos will be promoted. While yes, algorithm changes often hurt YouTubers, they also help others, and this is the case every single time. Just look at that channel that cuts things with a super hot knife, it gets like 300 million views a month right now. The next thing I hear a lot of people talk about is that us small independent YouTubers cannot compete with gigantic corporations, or at least it's very difficult. The concept behind this one is pretty simple, big corporations that run channels like Jimmy Fallon or CNN are able to spit out a ton of videos, and us little creators can't compete. Or can we? While a lot of people like this argument because it sounds good and it gives them a reason to stick up a middle finger to big corporations, in all honesty it's not a very good excuse. Want to know why? Overhead costs. Well yes, most big corporations do get a lot more views than me, they also have to pay for big office buildings in Los Angeles and Manhattan, union employees, and a ton of other little expenses that really add up. Me, I'm just a guy that sits in his bedroom and talks to a camera, yet I still get millions of views. What most people don't bring up in this argument is that while yes, I can't compete with CNN, I also don't have to because I'm not paying for anything that they have to. The other thing that small YouTubers have over corporations is genuineness. Most of these big corporate channels will never be able to compete with YouTubers in this respect because they're very impersonal, that's what a big business is. Another thing I've heard a lot of people pushing is that they're going to move to vid.me because this website is so terrible. First off, if you really wanted to scare Google, you would threaten to move to Facebook, then they may actually take you seriously. If you really do want to talk about vid.me though, fine, let's talk. First of all, they're currently not offering revenue sharing for people uploading videos, so you're essentially populating their website with content for free right now. Say all the bad stuff you want about how Google runs YouTube, but the one thing they're extremely good at is placing ads on this website, and splitting the revenue with people like me. Even if vid.me down the line was able to split revenue with its creators, do you really believe that they'll ever be able to match the rates of websites like Google and Facebook? Also, do you ever believe that in a million years, vid.me will be able to bring an audience for creators that's even half as big as YouTube's reach? So again, if you really wanted a website that can compete with YouTube, your best bet is Facebook. They are big enough to compete, but on the downside, if we all did jump ship, we'd probably face similar problems over there. The next point I've heard people argue that the site's broken is that videos that the fans seem to like don't get promoted that much. Well, basically, when, when I was uh, doing the daily vlogs, I noticed how really poorly they perform. I was really surprised by this, because generally vlogs do really well, and last year I did them and uh, they were fine. But I noticed like some videos didn't even get 2 million views. So I'm like, well, I guess people don't like the vlogs. But it was weird because all the comments were really supportive and, and really appreciative. PewDiePie's logic seems pretty reasonable, right? These videos don't get a lot of views even though everybody in the comments seems to like them. The problem with his logic though is that he believes the subscribers are always right. They're not. For example, just take a look at my channel. Two years ago I was making gaming content, hence the name The Gamer From Mars. But then I slowly switched over to internet culture videos. Even a year after my genre switch, I still had people in the comments constantly telling me to make more gaming videos. And I gave in and I made one, and guess what? It was my worst performing video in the past year. So what happened? I had all these people in the comments telling me that they wanted to see gaming videos, but then when I posted one, no one watched it. Just like PewDiePie, I gave in and listened to a vocal minority that didn't represent all my viewers. 
Yet another point I see is that some complain that YouTube only promotes the popular channels and small creators can't compete. I guess the logic is that they need to promote small channels, but the thing is, they already do this. Every channel including mine started off as a small channel, but then eventually our videos became more appealing to the YouTube algorithm and we became bigger. I really have a feeling that most of the people that make this argument are just salty that their videos aren't popular. In my first two years of making YouTube videos, I only was able to gain 500 subscribers. But I kept on making videos and you know what, eventually my channel took off. So in conclusion, YouTube is not broken. For the past decade now, I've seen people saying that this was going to be the end of the website every single time they made a little change. And guess what? We're still here. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of my new show, The Devil's Advocate. And I just want to make it very clear again that these episodes won't necessarily represent my true opinions on things. I'm just playing the contrarian in the situation. Of course, there are problems with YouTube, like a sub glitch that has people unsubscribe from channels even if they don't want to be, but I would argue that this is more of a little bug rather than a fundamental flaw to the website. Yes, it is a problem, but I don't think it's the biggest problem. The three strike you're out policy with YouTube copyright needs to be changed because it's just archaic and doesn't work with big channels that are really putting their heart and soul into a channel, just have it deleted because somebody has some false copyright claims written against it. And the biggest, absolute biggest problem with YouTube is that they do not communicate with us. Every single time they make a change, they just release it in an announcement and then they do it. And everybody's left scrambling, figuring out what's going on. And this just does not work well when there are people relying on this website for their livelihood. No matter where I stand on the issues, I do believe I made some good counterpoints to some arguments I've seen made on YouTube all the time. So if you have any ideas for future Devil's Advocate episodes that you'd love to see me make, please leave them in the comments below. So until next time, thank you for watching.